by the grace of God, we're going to continue the course of our lessons from the Old Testament. We are reading from the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah the prophet, chapter 4, continuing on the course of the lessons from the Old Testament, the book of Nehemiah the prophet, and chapter 4, verse 1. When Sanabalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates in the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? <coughs> Can they bring the stones back to life? from those heaps of rubble burned as they are. Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What they are building, what they are building, if even a fox climbed up on it, he would break he, he would break down the wall of stones. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn the insults back on their own heads. Give them over as a plunder. Uh, in a land of captivity. Do not cover up the guilt or blot out the, sa the sins from your side. For they thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. But when Sanabala, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the men of Asdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's wall had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out, and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemy said, Before they know it, it, it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, Wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot, and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the war, each to his own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, The work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. When wherever you hear 
wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet join us there our God will fight for us so we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out at the time I also said to the people have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by night and workmen by day neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes each had his weapon even when he went for water I mean in that way my dear brethren Nehemiah the prophet by the guidance and direction of God and God placed in his heart to ask from Artaxerxes the husband of Esther to go back to Judah as he learned as he was informed Jerusalem is destroyed and the walls are destroyed broken down and the gates broken half into half burned down and as we said before that was a miracle from God because he asked from the king to confirm and he indeed sealed two commandments and this is the sign that in 70 weeks in, and in the same way uh, in the seven year reign of the Antichrist And that would take place exactly like Daniel uh, prophesied. But the work wasn't easy. Of course, he had help from Maddox Sexes. Of course, he had, he had the materials. He had stones and money given to him. But there was also the enemy. And there's always an enemy. And they have three characteristics that are away from God. Firstly, they do not pay attention to man. They don't show respect. Second of all, they don't pay attention to their brothers. And they are not uh, fearing God. These are the three main characteristics that we, uh, with much attention, need to pay attention to, rather, because if we have diligence and respect towards God and people then indeed we will be blessed and Tobiah the prophet indeed when uh, Tobiah rather uh, and all the enemies when they saw Nehemiah coming he they were afraid but also when Nehemiah came back and he went around uh, the buildings the, the walls and he saw and they rather the, Tobias and Sanabalat went around and saw the uh, construction of the wall they ridiculed them they said they won't be able to do anything with it and they were laughing but Nehemiah gave out a, an, uh, a, an, a commandment and they started building and the first priest started and then each family all together they had their own work as a household as a family and they started building up the wall and they were building up the gates as well when they heard for a second time that Sanabalat and Tobias when they Sanabalat and Tobias and all the others heard about the construction and the how it was moving forward they were laughing against them and they even became angry and he said what are they doing these puny little people are we gonna allow them to continue on and bring sacrifices and finish their work how could they from the rubble that was in Israel uh, be they how can they build up the temple and the house of the Lord again 
and of course they said that even if they do it will be so puny so insignificant that even if a fox goes through it it would destroy that house that that place and Nehemiah was the person of God and he would also always pray and he would always strengthen the people of Israel as they were afraid and they decided and they and the people of Israel heard and understood that Tobias and Sanabalad conspired to come into Jerusalem and destroy them and kill them all one by one but Nehemiah learned about this because they informed him ten different times the Jews that were outside of the buildings of the of the of the wall of Jerusalem and they informed him very well about what the enemies of Judah were about to do and Nehemiah thank God he prayed to God Almighty and he gave uh, gods he he appointed gods because he was afraid and Judah the people of Judah they were f more afraid they said to themselves that there's too much to do but and we are not able to build a very important thing to say however they understood that there will be an upcoming attack inside Jerusalem and Nehemiah learned about this as well and he went to the lowest of places because the wall was constructed was started being constructed and it was halfway there as we see in verse 6 halfway there because the people were working with full heart and they were anxious and they did so because they understood that the people of Sanabalad and Tobiah were coming up against them and they needed help but there's no help no help other than God Almighty only he is able to help out any person any fa family and how family and household no matter what the situation is only God can indeed help out and the Word of God says this when Nehemiah learned about this he appointed to the lowest places of the war the people according to family and he gave them swords spears and bows in other words he prepared them for war and it wasn't a fair war just for us to understand because they were mighty the enemy uh, were mighty and the Jews were afraid And as I saw that they took on their weapons and did what I told them to do, he got up and said to the nobles, and it's very important for the nobles to and the people of God to always be together, for the house of God to be united. And this is the commandment of God. And he understood that they were united and, they, and he said, do not be afraid from them because remember our Lord who is great and almighty and you fought for your brothers before and you were not mighty for your sons and daughters, for your households and wives. 
in God. And this is amazing indeed. God, turn the mind around and ridicule them in front of them, in front of you. And the same happened with Abhitovil when he uh, spoke to Absalom to fight against uh, David. But his uh, voice wasn't heard by Absalom, even though that he was wise. When we see our enemy close to us, next to us, we need to pray with that beautiful prayer. Lord, please change the heart. Shift their minds away from what is wise and good and proper. And only you are able to fix this. You are on the only one able to help me out. And the only decision that he will make and take to be the faulty one. It's very important. Because if he takes the right decision, there's no salvation. Please, Lord, do this for your people. And when the enemies heard that the people of Israel understood and came to understand that they would be attacking, and even though they were mighty, they were afraid they didn't go. Why? Because God made them lose their mind. They have taken the decision to fight because the people of Israel wouldn't be getting away from it because they, the, the fight was great. And Tobias' and Sanabalat's armies were great. But also the Arabs were there, the Ammonites and the men of Ashdod. They were, they were having too many people, too many soldiers, and they decided to go against them. What is Nehemiah going to do now? What can he do? The first one is to pray and say, Lord, please help us out because you are the only prepared help for us. And the second one is, please, Lord, change the mind of Tobias, of Tobiah and Sanabalat so that they may take the false decision. Very important. The result was that once they heard that they were ready and they were willing to fight, they were afraid. They were afraid of the few, the few Jews that were in Jerusalem. The Lord placed it in their hearts to not go, not because they were afraid, but because they took the wrong decision. And I want to remain on to that. Because in our lives, there will be situations where these instances will appear. There will be people that will be better, more than us, greater than us. But we need to pray. And what really matters is for us to pray uh, with the right way, in the right manner. And I remember I had a great difficulty in my house, uh, in my professional environment once. And I said, Lord, you can throw down a, uh, a lightning and set me free. And as I was praying to God in this way, He blessed them even more. And they were becoming greater and greater. But I was illuminated by God once and I said, Lord, please just divert their understanding. And indeed, they started making one mistake after the other. And that, is very, that was very important indeed. Because one mistake after the other meant that I was blessed and successful. Very important indeed for us to trust God. Not to make, to, not to, to bring down a lightning. Because the Word of God says that we need to pray for the ones that are fighting against you. But one nice prayer instead is when they are ready to come up against you, for you to say, Lord, please divert their minds. Make them take the wrong decision. 
like Absalom and Akitobu, like the ones that have taken the final decision and they had the uh, power and the opportunity. Isn't that amazing? They have decided to do this. And when Nehemiah uh, prayed about this, the word of God says that we came back to our work into the war and they didn't come back. An amazing thing, isn't it? That is why we should never ask the destruction of our enemies. If someone is standing against you, if someone is hating you, if someone is afflicting you, what are you going to do? You are supposed to bless him. You are supposed to pray for him. And if he's even attacking against you, you need to pray to, to God and say, please, Lord, divert his understanding. Close up his mind. And what is the Lord going to do? The answer is grace. Do you know what the grace of God is? Do you know what that grace is? Even though that you don't deserve it, God will do more than what you asked for. That is why I'm not praying, Lord, bless me. And I'm not praying, please, Lord, bless my household. But I'm rather praying and saying to the Lord, please, I don't deserve your mercy. And I'm asking for it. Please, Lord, bring mercy down to my household and family. Please bring mercy down to, my, uh, to the church and the ones that are afflicting me so that our hearts may be fixed, so that we may see the power of God in us. And someone may say, don't slander, uh, squander. And bring bad news about brothers. Do you know what he did? Such a person that is bringing around rumors will never be blessed. Unless you pray for God to bless, to, to destroy him. Because if you do, then indeed he, God will bless him. And why we pray for them? We are praying for them so that God may bless them. I would dare say, how much would the disciples of God would pray for again so? I could dare say that they would uh, pray and say that you need to destroy him, Lord. Because, because, and, but they didn't because they were true Christians. We need to be true Christians as well. And who is that true Christian? The one who is afraid of people and respects people, all peoples. And especially the person who is afraid of God in such a way that he is obedient, completely obedient, perfectly obedient to the Word of God. He's not moving to the left or to the right. Whatever the Word of God says, it's I mean and yes for him. And it is very important very significant for us to be uh, obedient to the Word of God because the Lord says that He, Jesus Christ, learned from what He went through. And He was heard because of His uh, grace and because of His meekness. He became the Savior of all the people, not just the ones that uh, believe in His name, but the ones that are listening and are obedient to His Word. Do you want to be saved by God? Then you need to be obedient to His Word. If you want to be blessed by God, you need to be diligent and easy to learn. It's not easy. It's not easy at all for you to learn from all the things that you go through because our heart is maleficent and cannot go through them. But all the, cannot go through all these issues in life, but we need to pay attention to ourselves and our bodies. Because if we don't, then we, even though we preach, we will be lost. 
and I like that very much. God changed their mindset. And from that moment onwards, half of my servants, says the Lord, were working uh, on the wall. And the other half would hold their spears and bows on, on them. They were armed. And all the nobles were behind, uh, were behind them so that they may uh, help them out psychologically. This is what God wants. For us to strengthen the weak. For us to bring help out to the ones in need. And to bring foundation to the ones that need them. If you don't do that, then you are not a servant of God. Instead of strengthening, if you afflict, then you are not a person of God. You need to repent quickly. You need to ask for the mercy of God. And God will indeed bring that mercy down on Him. That is why the elders, the deacons, all the people that God has said for a work in the church, we need to have that into our minds. You could be an elder, you could be an elder brother or sister. Anyone who has a work in the church could be such a person that needs to strengthen others. Because if you don't, then you are not useful in anything. If you don't do, if you don't strengthen others, then you have nothing that the church uh, would need of you. And in that way, half of the servants were working uh, on the wall. Half of them were holding out the spears and armors and bows. And the nobles were behind them and they were bringing out help. But they were not just the ones that were the people in the world were not the ones that were only working. The Word of God says that they work each one of them rather would hold on the wall whatever his work was and with the other he would hold his weapon and this is how we are and our weapons are not human weapons but they are powerful through plus God with God and they are able to bring down thoughts because the Christian remains and will always be a fighter he will never stop being a fighter. He knows that with him he has an enemy against him. He has an enemy who is maleficent and evil. And if he is not uh, awake and aware, then he will be trapped. And it is very difficult. It's very terrifying for the enemy to trap you. And you will do what you don't want to do, what you shouldn't do. You say what you are not supposed to say. You go where you are not supposed to go. If you are not awake and aware. And they had all these characteristics. They would work for God. But they would also have uh, their armor on the right hand. Because they knew they had an enemy. And each one of them, since they needed both hands, they had their weapon right next to their hands. And that is the word of God for us. That, that sword is the right hand of... It, it's, the, it's, it's the word of God. And we know very well that it goes through the soul of a man. And it is very important for us to see that as the Word of God com explains it. And the Word of God says that the Word of God is alive and more lethal and able to cut through bone and soul. Is able, therefore, to separate the want in a person and, a, and the decide 
I want this, but I eventually decide what God wants me to decide. And it will separate through um, it will separate through the ligaments and it will separate the ligaments from the from the muscle and the soul of the person. That is the word of God. The word of God is able to divide, separate where you go and how your life is. Is your life according to the Word of God? Is your movement according to the Word of God? And also, is able to, the Word of God says, the ancient text says, uh, is able to separate the mindset, the memories, and the desire of the heart. The, the, the things that you remember, the things that you did in the past will surely lead you to uh, a place that is not correct. But what the soul wants, what God brings into the soul of a man, is what He wants him to do. And I'm going to repeat this. That the Word of God is able to separate and divide the soul of a man. And Nehemiah, in that way, he made uh, the ones that are working in construction because they needed both hands. And they had one hand, or, uh, they used their tools, but on the other, they had the, the, the spears and bows. But there's always... But there was also there's also the work of Nehemiah, and that is to have the trumpet. Very important work. Ezekiel says that I placed you to be uh, a, a, a God, and I've given you uh, a trumpet to blow out. Anyone who hears your word and hears a trumpet will be saved. But he who doesn't pay attention to your trumpeting, he will be destroyed. But you uh, save your soul. But if you don't use the trumpet, then anyone who will be uh, destroyed, God will ask the responsibility from you. You will be responsible for him. That, that is why we need to use the trumpet of God. And that, Nehemiah kept it for himself, but also for the people. He, he, not, he, didn't kept it for him, he didn't keep it for himself, but he used it for the people of Israel. He would look around, the one who used the trumpet, he would look around to spot out the enemy. And I said to the nobles and to the ones that were from with the people, the work that you do is great. It's not small. Because you are building something that is destroyed. And you are using gates that are destroyed. The, 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 the place is destroyed and the gates are broken down. We're not going to just build a small temple or a small uh, thing. And the work is great. We are far away from one another. We are separated because of our work. Someone was building the gate. Another one was building the walls. And someone else would use, would be used for a different work. But we, what we need to understand is that the wall was great. And the ones that were building were few. They were far away from one another. They were not near, next to one another. It's very important for you to have the trumpet. In other words, you are the guardian of your friend, of your brother. And Nehemiah says that the work is great. And we are far away from one another. But if you hear the trumpet... Because if the, the trumpeteer sees the danger, he will go there and he will sound the trumpet. And if you hear the trumpet, then all together you 
are supposed to abandon your work and you need to go out and fight for the ones that are in need and God will fight for us. In other words, you are not supposed to look out for yourself only, but we are supposed to look out for our work, but also for the security of our brothers. You need to bring out the trumpet of God, and you need to run for the ones that are in need. A very nice lesson indeed the Old Testament provides us with. And I like that very much. I do like the Old Testament and when we are receiving these nice uh, lessons we should be glad that God is with us and God is teaching us. And that is in the same manner we need to work our personal work what God has promised, what God has given us rather to work. This is the unity that God talks about. We all are supposed to work our own work but we all, together, we are supposed to work the work of God. Half of them were keeping their weapons from the beginning of the day until the, the rising of uh, the stars. There was a team that was prepared to go around and fight for the ones in need. Half of them, therefore, would keep spears from the moment that it, the sun went up all the way down to when the, when the stars came up. And I said to the people of God then, Jerusalem, you, each one of you, you are not supposed to leave these walls. You're not supposed to leave Jerusalem. You are supposed to leave within these walls to be, to be a guardian. They didn't go to their places, in other words, once they were done. Whatever their work was, fighters or builders, they didn't go away. They would sleep within Jerusalem. And that is very important. This is for us, that means for us that we are awake. And very important as well, uh, that we are always praying as the first apostolic church was praying when Peter was uh, went into prison. It is very important, my dear brethren, for us as well to learn how to pray and pray always. Not when we remember about it or when we find any time, but whenever and wherever we are, we need to pray. And how? In what way? as we are being baptized in the Spirit. If you are in your car, speak in tongues. If you are on the road, speak in tongues, even if it's inwardly. Because the Spirit knows all things. The Spirit knows that you are in need, and the Spirit knows that you are in danger, and the Spirit knows how to pray for your safety. Only the Spirit of God knows. We only know that we are sick, we are weak, we are not worthy. We have no power. That's all we know. And it is very important what Apostle Paul says. And I'm always saying it. But for me, it's terrifying. Indeed, I am the least of the apostles of the holy people of God. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. But I am working more than all of you. But it's not me. It's the grace of God that is living in me that allows me to do it. That does it for me, rather. The grace of God should be living in you and make you able to work without stopping, praying without stopping. What is that grace that we just, we're just talking about? Of course, we are saved through that grace, but we are receiving that kind of grace when we go up to the mountain of God, in front of the throne of God, and there we receive mercy. Not blessing, I need to stress this out, we receive mercy so that we may have gra the grace of God in the moment of need. We need to pray on continuously. Uh, thank God for everything that you have in your life. And at that due time, I said to the people of Israel, you with all uh, your servants and the people that are helping you out, you should all live and stay in Jerusalem. You need to keep a guard. You need to guard Jerusalem. 
and you need to guard the city of God and you need to guard the temple of God and your brothers and they would sleep within the walls and let them be uh, God builders for us in the day and guardians for us in the night. You, you need to pray during night and the day you need to work. Please, Lord, make us like that, Lord. Make us such a church. Make us such a household. Make us such a nation, such people. To pray during the night, to read the Word of God, and during the day to work the work of God. And in that way, Nehemiah continues on. And he says, No one, n neither will I, depart from uh, Jerusalem. Nehemiah therefore says that I my servants, my household, everyone, and my servants even, and the people that are coming after me, we will all remain in Jerusalem. He also, Nehemiah, in other words, he had guards, people that had weapons on them at all times, but not only them. All peoples were having weapons on them. We, uh, uh, they didn't dress off they didn't take off their clothes, and we shouldn't do that as well. In other words, we always need to be prepared. You need to be aware, awake, and pray. They were always aware and awake. They wouldn't take off their clothes. And, what, and that for us is the clothes of holiness, the Word of God. That is applicable to us. And as we are dressed on, this clothes and we see something very nice being said in Revelation I read the book of Revelation and I've reached that point and I'm the Word of God says if I can find it you can look it up with me It's uh, verse 15. But the brother didn't talk about the, uh, the chapter. But he says in free translation, the word of God says that blessed is he because the kingdom of God comes as a thief. And blessed is he who keeps his clothes so that he may not walk in a shameful way and naked. What Nehemiah did is exactly that when he was building the walls. And I'm going to read this again. None of us, neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with, with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon even when he went for water. And the word of God says that blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes safe so that he may not walk in nakedness and others can see his shame. But it's also very important what the Word of God says to the angel of the church in Laodicea that, says, that said that I am now rich and I have no need. And the Word of God says, that I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in, uh, in the fire because you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. That is why you are supposed to buy from me that refined gold. That is the word of God. You need also to buy from me white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness. White clothes, glorious. And lastly, thirdly, to salve and salve to put on your eyes so you can see clearly. So that you may not see what the eyes see, but what the faith of God, 
want you to see. These were the things that Nehemiah did. And as we're going to see further on, the results were amazing. The people of Israel was able to build the, the, uh, the gates and the walls, and they were blessed. But also, their enemies were destroyed. He's making us, our Father God, He's always making us triumphant. Are we triumphant? No. We are triumphant through Christ our Lord. And God wants us to always be triumphant. And God will make us so only if we call upon the name of, of Jesus. May God help us out so that we may always be dressed on white clothes, glorious ones, holy glorious, and have the word of God that is the gold that is refined through fire. And have vision. Vision of the Spirit. Amen.